for 11-T09 at uh, 7.30 p.m. May 4th. Uh, Mr. Bushbrook, uh, item on the agenda would be <coughs> Reverend Dr. James Roland, St. Michael's All Anglican Church, and Sarah Perkins. <coughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, creator and redeemer of all, you have given us this town as our heritage. Help us to be mindful of your generosity and careful in our stewardship of this gift. Bless our town with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from faulty courses of action. Give those gathered here tonight to whom we have entrusted the authority to govern our town the spirit of wisdom. Give them insight to make good decisions, integrity to face the truth, courage to make difficult choices, and compassion for the needs of others. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you very much, Thank you. Dr. Much. Um, if it sounds like i got marbles in my mouth tonight, I really don't. I'm sucking on lunges because i got a terrible sore throat. So please forgive me, okay? Um, the first item on the agenda is a public hearing, which I'll call to order. And the first time, uh, it's a uh, public hearing uh, on, on 730, and the agenda says the purpose of the public hearing is as follows. Section 16 and 18 of the Town of Strathmore Land Use Bylaw, number 89-20, as amended to state address authority and responsibility of the development officer, and authority and responsibility of, of the council respectively for the purpose of carrying out the provisions of the land use bylaw. Both sections provide for review and decision on development permits by council for permitted uses and uses within districts other than DC or direct control, which delays approval process by the amount of time between receipt of application and the next council meeting by which the file may be referred. Permitted uses are those uses, uses by which a permit must be issued provided the applicant meets all pertinent regulations under the land use bylaw. The Planning and Development Department has recommended amendments in the interest of reducing bureaucracy, which I like very much, and delays in the approval of permitted uses. And uh, no confirmation of notices. Um, for request, now a request from the Planning Department to and Development Department to represent us. Okay. Uh, with respect to the notices, uh, the bylaw was advertised in the April 22nd and 29, 2011 editions of the Strathmore Times. Uh, one other edition I would like to provide to Council is that we did receive a circulation uh, agency response from Alberta Transportation, and I am providing a copy to all of you. <laughs> why unless there has been um, a massive misinterpretation of the land use bylaw and its provisions or a variance was required or um, uh, we didn't have the jurisdictional powers to approve that permit 
it's very difficult to appeal it. And basically, um, the reason why this came up was we did receive an application for the school, um, which was at our last uh, at council meeting, and essentially the delay process of that approval was approximately two weeks because I had to bring it to council. Whereas if the true intent of a permitted use is that it just be reviewed and making sure that everything meets the requirements, then we could have easily approved it, um, like I said, about approximately two weeks earlier. Uh, Overall, in most cases, and, and from my experience and uh, uh, from discussions with other municipalities when I was uh, with municipal affairs, a lot of the councils have the approval authority. And again, we're just focusing on development permits. It's more so on the direct control district. And so that's not being taken away. The intent of the direct control is literally, as it says, direct control. So council has that authority with the development permits. But typically, what will happen is that, uh, and it has been common practice with the, the town, is that the, um, the, the, the department has processed and approved the development permits. If there's something that could potentially be controversial, of course, we will take it to council and present a uh, a report and a recommendation and let uh, council uh, the, uh, the development authority. So that's the basis of why this um, amendment is being proposed. <coughs> the other item is there used to be a classification or a, uh, a use called CCL. We search and we try to find where the CPL um, use or designation for specific uses were, but that was in an older version of the land use bylaw. So again, this has to do most of the of tidying up and cleaning up the land use bylaw and for that particular um, uh, section uh, that's applicable. Uh, with respect to the circulation promise, we received it from, as I just submitted, Alberta Transportation. Uh, Wheatland County, Alberta Health Services, and that for and no of the none of the agencies uh, had any concerns with the application. Um, at this point in time, uh, we did not receive any um, uh, persons wishing to, to speak towards this uh, uh, bylaw, but that doesn't necessarily mean potentially there could be somebody in, in the audience tonight uh, to. Comments. Thank you very much. Is there any uh, person in the audience who can make comments on this bylaw? If not, uh, anybody from council like to ask questions in administration? No other further questions in administration? Are there any questions? I um, ask for a request to close the public hearing. I would, I would move to close the public hearing. You all heard the motion. All in favor? Very unanimously. Thank you very much. Moving on the agenda, um, <coughs> anybody got anything to add to the agenda, Councillor? I do not, uh, Your Worship. Councillor Rocky. Uh, Your Worship, I see it's on uh, 7C, but we have two of these tonight. Uh, the That's what I can Okay. No, I have nothing down here. I have nothing to add, Your Worship. I have just something to add when I do the museum committee report as far as funding and funding requests. Thank you very much. Councilor Reckle. The residential uh, irrigation committee report. Can we have that with the committee? Yes. Thank you. Um, administration. Thank you, Worship. Any move from adoption of the agenda? Was there anything else? No. I move adoption. Yeah. Councilor Coleman, move adoption. All in favor? Carried. 3A, April 20th, Committee of the Whole, meeting number 11, W0884. Your Worship, I would move to uh, accept the uh, Committee of the Whole, meeting 11 W08. Y'all heard the motion? Well, any, uh, all in favor? 
very good. Please be. We move that council approve the minutes of the April 20th, 2011 regular council meeting 11 C08. Your Worship, I do have a, um, an item that needs to be changed. Um, on page 13 at the very top, uh, it says the item was defeated by Councillor Best, uh, but Councillor Best abstained. As for the uh, Municipal Government Act, it is not legal for me to abstain. I did, in fact, uh, oppose that motion, and uh, I would like that to read that. Also, um, on the bottom of page 12, um, although it's showing that uh, the first and second readings were, uh, were carried, which is true, um, it was mentioned in the paper that I had voted uh, uh, in favor of those motions. In fact, that's not the case. Um, I wasn't given an opportunity to vote as uh, it was never asked if there was anyone opposed. Well, I apologize for that because I took as your hand was going up and I watched, I watched the uh, I watched the the replay, so to speak, and it looked like your hand was going up and it did go up as soon as I called the question. So that's what was going on. So I, I either your hand is going up or it's not, and I apologize for not asking who's who's opposed. And I will from now on because I can see that that is necessary. If anybody wants to make, watch the minutes, they can on, on, on uh, camp camera, you'll be able to see that. So uh, what, what are you uh, asking us to do? Uh, to change the, uh, the top of page 13, which says defeated Councillor Best abstained. Um, it may be defeated Councillor Best uh, voted in opposition. <coughs> Fine. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Looking for a motion to have it... Uh, uh, Your Worship, just a quick question. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Best, then, do you want us to make note somehow that the first two votes would not have led us to a unanimous consent for a third and final reading? No, it's fine. It's, 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 a, it's a carried vote. Okay. Um, okay. It's just that it, it came out in, in, the, in the press otherwise. Your Worship, I would like to move that uh, we accept the uh, previous minutes of regular council meeting no, uh, number 11 C08 as amended. Y'all heard the motion, all in favor? Carried, none opposed. Um, eight, uh, three C. Eight, ten. Move the uh, acceptance of the uh, uh, minutes for the uh, April 26, 2011 special council meeting number 11 S01. Thank you. <coughs> All in favor? Carried. <coughs> and I was handed the next one, was that? We oh, is that already that one? Is that the one we just passed? That is the one that is three C. That is three C. That is three C. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Um for a centennial they up the page 21. Your Worship, I sit on that committee. I, uh, this was uh, brought up at the last meeting where council uh, requested uh, attendance by uh, uh, Centennial uh, representatives to provide a budget and a uh, tentative schedule for the July 2nd, July 3rd the weekend. Thank you. Linda, you're going to speak to us on that. Yes, um, on behalf of the Centennial Committee on uh, May the 4th, we had a meeting and we were just updating the schedule of that of event for July 2nd and July 3rd uh, today. Uh, so for July 2nd, uh, Deer Growing Contest begins at 11 a.m. The raising of the flag at Crimson Park uh, at 11.30 a.m. Clock dedication and speech from the mayor at 11.45 a.m. Clock whistle, 12 noon. Uh, airplane flyover, 12.10 p.m. Uh, Chautauqua would start at 1 p.m. And so far for that, we have the Asian Choir, Lindsay Gogol, Carol Murphy, the Wheatland Whirler, Chuck Bailey with a John Cash imitator, Mike Newton, who's a magician, the Strathmore Theatre player, 
and Lee Stafford Crawford. Additional information for the second, there will be an antique auto show set up on second half. Uh, Eagle Radio will do a live broadcast. There will be two horse-drawn wagons, uh, Centennial Com Community Garden at the Anglican Church. Farmer's Market will be at the South End of Kinsman Park. Uh, Dump Tank is organized and will be run by the Fire Department. Uh, and just a note, the mayor and council have been challenged to sit in the dump tank seat. Uh, there will be mascots. Um, Did you say only council? <laughs> <laughs> and we're also anticipating the uh, Stampede Princesses and Stampede Flying Dancers to be in attendance. The events for July 3rd, throughout the day, there will be uh, a balloon toss, sock races, tug of war, face painting, the Hope Community Church Jumpy Castle, old fashioned box lunch picnic in the park, and a community worship service beginning at 6 p.m. The budget so far for July 2nd and 3rd, the Eagle Radio Station would be $2,050 plus GST, the two horse drawn wagons, $800 plus GST, and the dump tank, $350 plus GST. Thank you. Um, just two, uh, two items I'd like to talk about is that one, remember the first 500 people received a, uh, a, a, a golf ball that cut. The first 500 people coming on the on July 2nd got a golf ball that was got the Centennial logo on it. And secondly, there's no guarantee on the plane. I just looked at it today. Its wings are off and uh, it's hard to fly that way. Yeah. <laughs> so we're hoping that it gets done by then. He promised me it can be, but I'm in close contact with him all the time. And we hope it can be done. It's a World War II bomber for those people who are interested. It's a beautiful plane. And uh, it's only about, uh, I think it goes uh, um, one mile per memory car. And, and three gallons of gas. Like 1,200 gallons per mile. <laughs> anyway, it's very expensive to operate. And it's Mr. Murray that's not flying it. And thank you very much to him. I don't know that, any questions of the concert best? Um, I was just wondering, the $3,200, is that, is that in, in your uh, the centennial budget now, or is that needed? That's in the budget. Thank you. This is just an update on where we're at so far. And, and who's monitoring this closely? You're the one monitoring it. Is the committee monitoring it, or how are we, how are we keeping track of it? I'm monitoring it. Okay, thank you. Councilor Rundle. Uh, Senator <coughs> Chair, to let out. It says beer growing contest starts at 11 a.m. When does it end? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm anticipating it will probably only take a short period of time, 15 minutes. For guys and girls? <laughs> Guys, okay. <laughs> so that's when you start growing your beard at 11 a.m. That's, that's right. it. It's going to be done by quarter after. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? No, just, uh, I, I would just uh, note, uh, Your Worship, in addition to Linda, we've got uh, Mike Allen and Robert Breitweiser in the uh, audience. They're both uh, uh, they both the leads on this uh, on this weekend. So um, my hats off to you, gentlemen. Thank you for all the hard work you've done. You've got a uh, hard task ahead of you, and uh, I think Council appreciates uh, an update, and if there are additional updates between uh, uh, now, since we're getting uh, down to the uh, crunch here, uh, we'd appreciate uh, some updates as to uh, what additional costs you may be incurring, just to make sure that we're in uh, in line with everything else. Your Worship, uh, is it okay if Mr. Breitweiser uh, makes a comment? It's, uh, it's just a minute, is everybody in favor left to... It's actually his report anyway, so Okay, go ahead. You got a minute and a half. <laughs> I apologize, this is a very late report, but I just had a telephone call um, just before coming here from Ken Stobie. We hired him to do the sound for the 2nd of July. He's doing the sound for uh, Canada Day, and we managed to hire him for somewhat less so that's a $500 additional cost to our uh, second, second of July activities. And also we've added $100 in for hospitality. Um, I can just tell you briefly, I've been doing a lot of hospitality in order to get people on board and so forth, and I've paid for that out of my own money. 
And so uh, we put in $100 for that. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Thank you. And the other one thing, it's all on the website, right? Clearly, that if people want to get a hold of you or want to help or, or, or whatever, they can they can just get a good hold of them to look on the website. Oh, and brochures. We're, we want to uh, have a thousand brochures. We're getting them for 20 cents a piece. That's 50% off. I got a deal. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a cup of coffee here and there helps. So that's all we need. We have about 5,000 pound brochures we want to leave with you, too. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're very Good welcome. job, folks. Thanks. Great job. Thank you. Five. Eight. Public hearing. Six. Twenty-two. We wish to move the public that council set a public hearing for June 1st, 2011, at 7:30 p.m. with uh, procedures in accordance with council procedures bylaw 07-11 and municipal government act section 230 and amendments thereto. We all hear the motion. All in favor? Carried. None opposed. Uh, 5B, page 23. We have a staff report on this, I understand. Um, yes, Your Worship. Uh, I guess it was still on holiday mode while we were doing the public act hearing. I forgot to uh, note that uh, for the last item on the bylaw, which is um, number seven, uh, the wording was not very clear as well as it, it really didn't make sense. So the um, item that we hope to add to the bylaw is that council may vary what may allow a variance of any or all of the requirements were in their discretion and the proposed change that's the existing too. The council may allow a variance of any or all of the requirements for those permits noted in section 18 subsection 1 and that's the only change to the bylaw that was presented at the public hearing. And the recommendation, sir, is that council give the second reading to bylaw number 11 5 and that council amend bylaw 11 5 by amending the, the, um, the verbiage that I had mentioned. And uh, then the, um, the request is to question the motion for second reading and that uh, council give third and final reading to the bylaw. So we have to amend it first, right? After second. After second reading. After second reading. Then, yeah. Great. I would move the council give second reading to bylaw 11-12. If there's no, I'll hear the motion. Any discussion on it? Any questions of anybody? Not. All in favor? Jerry. None opposed. Um, now we're looking for the amend, uh, amendment. Your Worship, I would move the amendment. I think we do go. Yes. Yeah. Who's making the amendment? I'd move that council amend bylaw 1112 by amending the, that to the amending quote the council may allow uh, a variance of any of all the uh, requirements where in their discretion to the council may allow any or all of the requirements for these permits noted in section 18 uh, sub 1 from subsection 2. Two, amending the council may allow a variance of any of all of the requirements that were in their discretion. Two, the council may allow a variance of any of all the requirements for these permits noted in section eight, 18 sub one from sub section two. This is clarifying things? Yeah, very well. We've <laughs> <laughs> got it all. <laughs> really housekeeping, ladies and gentlemen. It's not funny, it's just housekeeping that is getting done. Um, if there's no questions on that, Amendment. Uh, all in favor? Any opposed? None. Your Worship, I move the council to approve the final reading of bylaw number 11-12. That is third reading. Third reading. Yeah, third and final reading. Thank you. You all heard the motion? All in favor? Carried. None opposed. Thank you. I'll get back. That was well done, Council Trouble. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, 5, C, page 29.
Go ahead. Uh, Your Worship, I am going to give you the um, a revised bylaw to the bylaw that was initially uh, presented into the package. There is a minor amendment to it. And the fact that we're asking for three consecutive readings, um, I have to give you the opportunity to review the bylaw prior to the adoption of it. I understand it's a really one simple word, right? Don't make this complicated, okay? <laughs> Go ahead, if you want to explain it. Sure. Um, the purpose of this bylaw is to amend uh, the recently adopted Planning and Development Fees Bylaw. And basically what it is is that even though we have a policy that we charge back invoice, um, invoices from our contract engineer for uh, development permit reviews uh, on solar management plans and air restriction plans as well as subdivision plans, um, we wanted to make it very clear this has been a policy for many years and that our fees are transparent and uh, that people can say that this is something new to them. Um, again, the, the philosophy of our department is to be as open and honest and provide as much information as possible to help make a more of a less frustrating type of uh, process because it can be complicated as uh, was noted through the amendment to the bylaw for 11-15. Um, so basically what we were asking for is to make it very clear of the contract engineering fees, as well as now um, just have for de demolition permits a straight flat $100 fee. Again, very simple. Um, because it is it was adopted by bylaw, we have to amend that bylaw with a bylaw. And so our request and um, recommended action is that council give first reading to bylaw number 11-15. And that council give the second reading of bylaw number 11 15. That council give unanimous consent for third and final reading of bylaw 11 15. And hopefully, uh, that council would give third and final reading to bylaw 11 15. Can you make those motions? <laughs> I am not able to do so. Anyway, anyway, we have a motion on that, please. Your Worship, I move that council give first reading to bylaw number 11 15. Thank you. You all heard the motion on there. Your Worship, I move that Council give second reading to bylaw number 11 15. Why is your mic louder than everybody else's? <laughs> I'm not sure, sir. Uh, you all heard the. Uh, 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 any, any discussion on this? Any questions of administration? If not, all in favor? Carried. Your Worship, not opposed. The Worship, I, give, I make motion that Council give unanimous consent for third and final reading of bylaw number 11 15. You all heard the motion. All in favor? Gary, not opposed. And I would move that council give third and final reading to bylaw 11 15. You all heard the motion. All in favor? None opposed. Gary. Our fire D, page 34. Are we parking? Here? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, our department was requested to provide a text amendment to uh, section 61, uh, which is the RV parking um, section of the land use bylaw. And uh, what we are hoping to <coughs> obtain is uh, that council gets first reading to bylaw 11 16, and then to refer the bylaw to a public hearing. Um, as this is a significant uh, amendment. And basically it's to address the off-street parking uh, possibilities of RVs for sort of the camping season. Thank you. Y'all have a uh, recommendation? Looking for a motion? Just to vote a public hearing. If you wish, if I would move the council to your first reading to bylaw uh, <clears throat> 1116 uh, at a regular council meeting on SGD. Thank you. Y'all heard the motion? One favor? <laughs> Very none opposed. I move that council refer bylaw number 11 16 to the public hearing scheduled for June the 1st, 2011. 
Y'all heard the motion. All in favor? Gary, down on board. Six A here. Residential irrigation page thirty nine. I understand that we have a Councillor Grenfell. He wanted to make a recommendation or a motion. Well, I'd, I'd uh, 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 received a phone call today uh, indicating that uh, uh, at least one person from the uh, uh, Residential Irrigation Committee would like to uh, either uh, uh, present a report or, or part of a report, uh, maybe just a, uh, verbally. Uh, and uh, because they're not uh, uh, on, on the agenda, uh, as, as an agenda item, regular agenda item, uh, we would need uh, a motion and, and uh, uh, I guess a, uh, not a majority, but a, a, I guess a majority vote from council for that to proceed. So I would like to make a motion that uh, Mr. Bob Carver from the uh, Redemption Irrigation Committee be allowed to uh, uh, make uh, a few comments, uh, limiting it to a few minutes, maybe, so that uh, we can uh, uh, get an update, uh, the latest update from the committee. Do you make that as a motion? Yes, I am. Thank you, and I would like to add to that that uh, that is only one speaker, please. We're not going to make this into a charade tonight. Um, he only speaks once, and uh, and, uh, and no questions. No questions. It's just that we're allowing him to speak, okay? Yeah, respectfully. And now we'll hear from administration. Do you want to hear? Uh, do you want to hear from Bob speak first? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's right. All in favor? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. You want it? Go ahead. Pardon me? Uh, there was a couple of posts that you wanted to record. That was Gary. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak for this. There are two main points that I'd like to address. One was largely the taken care of. And one of them dealt with developing a sustainable system. And thanks to the motion that we passed recently on uh, the charges for water, that has increased the uh, pricing window for us to make a sustainable system. Uh, it makes irrigation water uh, more attractive than it was prior to that. Thank you for that. The next item is uh, Jesse's report, which on most issues we are in agreement with. We don't think anything here is more than a minor problem that could be ironed out. There is, however, one major issue, and that is the amount of water that the town should be using in their parks and sharing on the cost. And as you know, you can see that from us showing the lines going to the various parks, not all of them, but to the ones that are served by irrigation and the acreage for those parks. And we feel those parks should be filled for the water. Whether the town chooses to do that is up to them. But uh, this has a major impact on the cost of irrigation for the user. Now, we don't think that this is a policy that can be decided by residential irrigation users. This is a policy that basically impacts residential irrigation, but it should be decided by the council uh, in terms of what you want to do with the parks. Certainly it has a major impact on it, but we don't think we can dictate it to them. But what we have set out is what we think the town's responsibility is. And in the past, the parks have been watered with irrigation water, and we think that should be the default position for at least this year. Going to the future, we think council should hold a public hearing if they want to change that policy. And it affects all residents, not just irrigation users, but all residents of the town. And we think there should be a policy set 
on how you're going to look after the parks. And I don't think it makes sense for us to tell you how to do it, but certainly it has a major impact on whether residential irrigation is needed. Currently, with the proposal that is going forward to you today from Jesse, they are basing it on about five acres that they're planning on water. And our calculations put it at about 40 acres. And it drastically changes the cost proposal, going from approximately $50 to use it to $200, which clearly is not going to fly. I mean, this is $20 more than it was proposed last year. So we think council should address this issue with a public hearing that involves all citizens and establish a policy. Clearly, I don't think it should be done just uh, on some small thing. I think all citizens should have input to this, and I don't think it can be done quickly. So I don't think it can be done in time for the assessment year of 2011, but I think it could be done for the following year, and that is crucial to establishing a sustainable system. And the other issues are dealt with in here, but I don't think there's anything that we can't work out. But that one is crucial. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. operating strategy uh, uh, parameters established within that recommendation just to set forth what that uh, looks like, um, three assumptions, and, uh, but basically from a parameter perspective it's recommended that the system be available between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. daily um, in alignment with our uh, current outdoor watering uh, uh, policies and protocol. Um, it's recommended that outdoor watering of lawns uh, with uh, automatic sprinklers be limited to between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. daily uh, for the purposes of... Just meant, can everybody hear back there? No, no not, at no. not at all. Not at all. Not to see you. nothing. There's a microphone. <laughs> really? Is that better? No. no. Is that any better? No. No. Mike doesn't want it. <laughs> it, it, it's a quick filter, isn't it? Well, it might not make it work. I can, I can speak a little louder, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> that, can everyone hear me now? You, you, you can, I can get in there and then just press everyone here. <laughs> so, uh, a few operating parameters on the system. Basically, uh, having a system available between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. daily. Uh, outdoor watering permitted between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. again in the evening between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. aligning with our current uh, potable water uh, watering guideline. Uh, we would have uh, two seasonal operators hired at, uh, at a rate yet to be established but thought to be at a maximum of approximately $17 per hour. Uh, it's recommended that we wouldn't purchase any vehicles uh, but basically take over replaced vehicles through the town's 10-year capital replacement plan. Uh, so we'd save some asset costs there. Uh, Hydrovac services, based on the need, will be uh, contracted. We feel that uh, there will be some need, but not enough to substantiate and justify purchasing a $200,000 or even a $40,000 used trailer for Hydrovac purposes. So it would be a contracted services in that event. Uh, and also just uh, kind of a go forward thought on, on Glenwood. Given the size of the system to support 15 homes in Glenwood, it would be recommended that the system be operated until such time as there's a major infrastructure replacement required. And based on the small commitment that we had from the Glenwood users this season in our commitment request of two users, that upon a major infrastructure replacement, the Glenwood system be decommissioned at that time. So 
with respect to that, the finances come out to we recommended an operating budget of $85,000, consisting largely of labor, um, some administrative costs, fuel and uh, vehicle costs, water purchase costs from the WID. Uh, we've estimated some repair costs. Just that we've uh, anticipated, you know, approximately 10 major repairs, uh, approximately $1,500, assuming that we do need to contract some hydrovac uh, uh, expertise. $21,000 in electricity costs, which is basically taken directly from the committee's recommendation in terms of pump costs and utilization, and uh, $2,000 overhead costs, uh, including cell phones, safety equipment, uniforms, things along those lines. On top of that, we've also, I've also recommended a $15,000 capital budget. Uh, that capital budget is intended to establish a reserve uh, as a commitment to the system beyond the year 2011. So we're basically committing to the system beyond this year in this recommendation and $15,000 to be invested in the system on an annual basis. In year one, we've actually recommended that we support the committee's recommendation to put screening and valving, uh, ramp valving into the system uh, and the town would absorb that additional cost in year one to the tune of $11,250. So the town, based on this recommendation, the town would share the cost with the town paying 20% of the cost based on the park uh, usage and the users of the system paying 80%. So on a $100,000 total uh, operating and capital budget, the town would pay $20,000. In year one, it's actually $31,250 and the users would pay $80,000. So based on the $80,000 number, uh, we struck a approximate cost at a reasonable approximate cost of $200 per season up with 400 users working out to that $80,000 with the town um, kicking in the extra $20,000 for the park water and water. So it's recommended that if there are not 400 users that we don't get into a situation where we're adjusting fees at the end of the year um, based on the number of users, because there could be various opt-outs, things along those lines. But based on this operating parameter, it would be a requirement that there be 400 users established at the start of the year, and that 400 users would, uh, would generate that $80,000 requirement. If there are more than 400 users signed up, it, it's believed that obviously there's additional significant investment required into this system. Um, as, re as demonstrated in our operating year of 2009, um, we basically decided, depending on obviously the number of users that were to sign up, if it were you know a marginal number above 400, the excess funds would be invested into the system as part of an increase in capital investment and commitment to the system, uh, treating it almost as though it's a utility at that point. And funds uh, collected for the system would be reinvested back into the system and not obviously used otherwise. Um, if there was a sufficient sign up or a significant sign up over and above the 400, uh, then obviously we could look at reducing the overall costs and things along those lines, or cost to the users, things along those lines. So this is just a kind of an operating parameter to establish a budget um, with that budget to, uh, to basically operate the system for 2011 and beyond. Thank you. Any questions of Jesse, Council Appeal. Through the chair to Jesse, can you explain why our numbers or our, our percentage of parks irrigated is so different from the Irrigation Committee? Um, I'm getting a sense that that's one of the biggest uh, sticking points in us, in us doing this. We've done an assessment on the number of parks that physically have the capability to be watered. Um, yeah, I'll give you an example. In Kinsman Park, uh, the Devonian Garden area is the only area of Kinsman that can physically be watered based on the system that's underground. So the rest of Kinsman Park does not have the capability to be watered. If we were to turn on that irrigation system, we get no pressure because the line has been cut through. It's been, um, I'll give you an example, the amphitheater when that was constructed. I have information that um, when that was excavated, there was a number of irrigation lines that were ripped up by accident. But based on the inavailability of, uh, of as built drawings of the system. So, um, and that's true throughout the soccer fields in Parkwood. Uh, there's been a number of excavations that have occurred in, in the Parkwood system that. Uh, 
but now we do not have the capability to irrigate the system in Parkwood. And that's been that way for the last seven, eight years, <coughs> from what I've been told. So um, there's other systems where there are, is an irrigation line that goes to the edge of the park, but there's no physical irrigation system beyond that. So in terms of irrigation, um, you know, we could water off a hose at the end of a gate valve type of thing, but it's not a simple irrigation turn-on of a system that's pre-existing in, in the underground. So based on our past experience in, in watering the parks, we've made a recommendation to the, uh, to the committee uh, previously that the number of parks that we anticipate that we'll irrigate is approximately seven acres worth of, of park space. And then on top of that, uh, the new soccer fields and ranch estates, uh, we also would like to irrigate with uh, non potable water uh, going forward. And the soccer association has paid for, uh, for pumps to be installed in that pump station. So, so it's basically the number of parks that we have available to the system is uh, there's some delta there with the number of, of parks as well as the infrastructure in those parks and then the damage to some of that infrastructure that's currently in the ground. Okay, thank you. Councilor Best. I just want to make sure I got this right. We have, currently, when, when we sent out for, for people to, uh, to sign up for irrigation now, we had 94 people total signed. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so, and, and, and you're talking $80,000 per, per users here. That's right. Is that a hundred? With the town subsidizing $20,000. So what we're looking at then with 94 users is $850 per person. I can think of no one in this town who's going to pay $850 to get irrigation. Councilor Rumble, any comments? Would you like to start and get around? Sure, good matter. Go ahead. Very briefly, Your Worship, uh, we've been around this thing. Uh, it's very clear that uh, nobody appears is uh, objects to the irrigation, in spite of the the fact that uh, there's a suggestion we do. Uh, we we support irrigation. We just don't know how to pay for it. Um, number seven, uh, item number seven on the uh, residential irrigation advisory committee final report and recommendations. Uh, makes it very clear that the system should be user pay. Um, I have, uh, uh, I take no objection to the, uh, the numbers supplied by our uh, engineering and operations people in this. I think it's a very reasonable number. Um, and I like the fact that uh, they're even uh, looking at this uh, long range, but I think it's, uh, it's a reasonable uh, expectation uh, to the people that have uh, potential to use irrigation to uh, step up to the plate, it's time, um, put up a couple hundred dollars and uh, let's maybe start improving the system. Uh, the final uh, uh, issue that I deal with is that uh, I'm very, I'm convinced that uh, the people who do not have access to irrigation do not want to pay for others to have irrigation. Thank you. Who pays for the damages? Councillor uh, Rocky. <coughs> No, no comments from the gallery, please. Thank you. Your Worship, uh, I can deal with uh, the people on this side. I can also relate to Councillor Sobel's comments here. Uh, a user pay system, I just find it hard to believe it, it can actually work as a user pay system. There's too much involved here. Uh, my common business sense here still tells me uh, we're, I don't know, we're not headed in the right direction on this. Well, well, first and foremost, I'd like to comment that uh, uh, Command Jesse and, and uh, the committee for its, its diligence and its work. I've uh, heard comments from both sides of the, uh, the fence. Uh, people that don't have the irrigation don't want to subsidize the people that do have the irrigation. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough road to hope. Uh, I don't firmly believe that. I firmly believe that it should be, uh, as per the committee's suggestion, that a user pay. And uh, hopefully they can uh, get the numbers up and uh, go from there. Thank you, Councilor Beck. Your Worship, I, I've always been for um, irrigation um, 
sometimes the dollars don't make sense and the cents don't make dollars. Um, however, um, it was a couple of years back that uh, Councillor Rempel came up with a solution that, that I thought was, uh, was very viable and, and I still believe in. And that is uh, to fix this in quadrants, to shut down a quadrant for a year and fix it. Um, granted, we're going to have to run the system through that time, but by the time we're finished, and, and, I, and I honestly believe that um, if we build it, they will pay for it, that uh, the fact of a $200 bill, if, if, if this system is going to work, that people will pay that. Um, right now, we have a system that's broken. Uh, two years ago, we gave back everyone half their money. Uh, last year, it didn't run simply for the fact that it is broken. Um, we need to fix it, and, and the cost is enormous. Um, having said that, I don't know um, where the money would, would be coming from to fix it, um, and that's where my quandary lies. I'm, I'm certainly um, wanting to have this, and I certainly uh, believe that it, it's one of the, uh, the things in our town that brings people to our town is the fact that, that, uh, that we have the irrigation here, not like many of the other towns. Um, I'm just concerned fiscally how, how we can do this. Councilor Gill. Well, <laughs> I really believe in irrigation too. I think um, looking far into the future, Councilor Rempel has swayed me quite a bit lately. He's saying that we can leave a legacy to the future, and, and water is gold, and it's going to be very important even as years go by. <laughs> so I know it's expensive. I know that there's a, there's a feeling that there may be subsidizing going on, but I really believe that this can be a user pay uh, system. And it sounds like a leap of faith, but um, I really believe the biggest sticking point is that the cost is, is being clouded by the fact that we have different numbers for what part the town should be paying as far as our parks irrigating. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits to it. I know it's, it's, it's uh, to me it's amazing we have an irrigation canal that goes right through our town uh, and to not make use of it seems tragic. So. No, residential irrigation is a Strathmore advantage. <laughs> residential irrigation is something this town has prided itself upon as a drawing card to attract families to move here for many years. No other community of our size has a canal system running through their town like we have, and able to service each subdivision with irrigation water like we can. Water has become a very precious commodity. With our new water and sewer rates in effect, it will become cost prohibitive to use potable water for irrigating purposes. Untreated water from our canal system is our only affordable long-term option for this and future generations of Strathmore. Folks, as long as there is water flowing in our canal system through Strathmore, we must do everything in our power to keep residential irrigation in place. Yeah. And wherever possible, provide existing subdivisions with irrigation service to conserve the use of potable water that we are paying such a premium for. <coughs> Excuse me. Just because we have an ample supply of water today doesn't mean that we are not going to need irrigation water in the future. Some of us in this room, the present mayor included, knows what happened when the council of the day gave up the rights to the CPR right away. The very same thing will happen here. If we give up irrigation, it will come back to haunt us. When we are faced with water shortages in Strathmore, and this will happen in our lifetime, what will we tell our children and our grandchildren? We were only concerned with short-term costs and therefore didn't consider what might happen in the future. What kind of legacy will this council leave future generations of Strathmore? Are we going to be another council that just dealt with short-term costs? Or a council that focused on the future, ensuring that there would be an adequate supply of water for the citizens of Strathmore? Folks, 
Water is a precious commodity and therefore must be conserved. Thank you very much. I think everybody's spoken and is my mic on? Um, I, I, I'd like to say that, you know, Stratmore is, um, is a, a, a unique, unique community and that as somebody convinced me in the crowd, I think it was Bob, that, you know, I, I kept arguing with him, but it was an essential service. And I suppose in some ways it is an essential service to bring people to the community. Uh, we don't, all of us don't use the, the swimming pool. I included, uh, which I probably should, but, uh, you know, I paid for it. We don't all use uh, various recreational, uh, the ball diamonds, but we pay for them. There's a many, many situations that we use. I, the sidewalks, some of us don't use the sidewalks. I should be using them. I don't, I, I still pay for them. You know, I, I, there's many things. So to me, this is a service that we, on a long-term basis, we have to really look at and, and probably dig down deep. Yeah, we made some mistakes in the past. I know it's going to be expensive. We all got to be prepared for it. We want to try more to grow. And one of the letters and ways I sign off most of my letters that I send out now is in Strathmore, we care. Well, this is one way of showing we care. And I think we should go for it, no matter what the costs are. Thank you. <laughs> I guess we're looking for a motion by uh, somebody to... Pardon me? Point of order, Your Worship, there is, there is a motion on the floor. Uh, this was brought back to us. A previous meeting um, and uh, Councillor Rempel at that point um, moved to uh, bring his motion uh, to back to this meeting. I agree, Councillor Rempel. Yes, yeah, so and I would ask that administration read back the motion, please. Thank you. Okay, the current motion on the table is as a result of Council's goal of a commitment of 500 users not being reached, it is recommended that the motion be made that the town will not offer the residential irrigation service in 2011. However, it was requested that the word not offer be taken out. So the new motion that's here at this point says um, what I said, other than the town will offer the residential irrigation system in 2011. But you're taking out the uh, 500 also. And the word 500. The word 500, okay. Is that correct? Yes. yes. We reread the, re -read the motion, please. That was expense. The motion to consider then without those words is as a result of the council's goal of a commitment of users not being reached, it is recommended that a motion be made that the town will offer the residential irrigation service in 2011. You all heard the motion. Any further discussion? I, I, I just would like to clarify what, what yeah. this means. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I don't know what it means. Oh. Is, is this, we are paying a uh, bill for... Uh, no, no, I, I recommend, I would, I'm sorry, this is not the adjusting rate. As recommended by, by, uh, by administration, right? Well, that's not what's in the motion, though, Your Worship. It's amended then. Well, it's amended then. Okay, so, it, it's recommended that a motion be made that the town will offer residential irrigation services to the outcome Councillor Beck. Your Worship, I, I may uh, I may ask that uh, Councillor Rempel rescind his motion and, and uh, give us a new one, please, so that all the extra wording is not there. Uh, yeah, through the Chair, to Councillor Best, my motion still is that Tom Strathmore offer irrigation services in, in 2011. Right, but, I, but at the start of that, it talks about not having enough people. I, what I would like you to do is, is just rescind the motion that's on the, that's, that's there and, and come back to us with it right now with a new motion so, so that all, all the extra fluff is gone. Well, well what about the dollar and cents for the concert? So we're concerned about it. Well, we're talking about two different motions here. Yeah. Councilor Rempel, why don't you go, with your, go ahead with your motion then, and, we'll, and then add a, uh, we'll have one for the dollars and cents. I make a motion that the town of Strathmore offer residential irrigation for the year 2011. Thank you. Thank you. You all heard the motion. Any discussion? Further discussion? Well, without any specifications, I, I certainly can't vote for that. We don't know who's paying for this. It's, I mean, it could be totally our cost that way. That's right. So we're asking. That's why I made a motion of it. 
Okay, y'all heard, and, and if there's no further discussion, y'all heard the motion. And we can... uh, Your Worship, if I, if I could, could we not <laughs> make an amendment to the motion that deals with accepting the administration's recommendations on reinstating irrigation? I don't want to. Oh, you just want that to stand yeah. as it is? Just go ahead. Wait. Councilor Best. Your Worship, I'm wondering um, what date do we have to make a final decision on that? I don't believe that that has to be made on this date. I believe there is time to uh, to do that. And I'd like to uh, go over um, the, uh, the new <coughs> figures that we got from the committee, as well as the new ones we have from our uh, from our administration, and would move that this be. Uh, Put over until uh, yeah, I'm sure I, yes, I know. Well, there's one motion on the floor, first off. And and secondly, if we keep on these over, we'll be irrigating in December. I mean, it's it just, I, I can't make, I'm just asking what date we have to make a final decision on. Well, I, the, the administration let us know that I will, it, we have to do it tonight. Yeah. Uh, I estimate it's approximately a four week period for a recruitment training. The earliest, if there were a decision made this evening that we could turn the system on, would likely be first week of June. I think we've got to make decisions tonight. Let's get on with this. I mean, no, we want to do it. But, uh, there's a motion on the floor. I think if we can amend the motion, Councilor Rempel, it would happen. Uh, if you could uh, see yourself uh, add a dollar figure in there, a maximum of a dollar figure, and I think that would be ha people would be happy. We, we have it. He's given us the dollar. But we didn't say that you're following his, his recommendation. Um, well, yeah, but the, okay, but then I, I, I don't agree with the uh, with with the uh, numbers of, uh, of uh, 300 or 400. We took that out. We took that out. So 400 users signed up. We took that out. So, okay, so then if we take that out, yeah, then 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 I, I uh, uh, then we can go along with that uh, record. Uh, Administrator's recommendation. That's all I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Sure. Your Worship, you take that 400 number out of there, and all these other numbers change. No, necessarily. No, the bottom line is still the same. The bottom line will stay the same. Nobody's going to pay $200. Your Worship, this does not deal with how this is going to be paid for. You got a motion. <coughs> Your Worship. Please. No, no, no comment from the floor, all right? Um, Without, are we still in discussion? I understand. Yes. If you don't mind. Um, if we're not dealing with how this is going to be paid, then, then uh, theoretically, this whole bill will be on the taxpayers uh, of, of all of Strathmore, unless we are uh, uh, defining who's paying for this. So the motion is just to open uh, open uh, uh, irrigation for 2011. So it's it. Please refrain yourself from speaking. Whoever's doing that. Um, we, we must handle this somehow, and let's get together and make this work. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll remove the, the 400 users. That number has been removed. And, and, and uh, I will accept the uh, administration recommendation. And, and uh, along with uh, uh, Continue on with the irrigation service. We're talking about $100,000? Yeah. So it'll be maximum of $100,000. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You all heard that. You understand it, everybody? No, Your Worship. You're, you're taking 400 people out of the equation here. We're still only spending $100 regardless. We are spending $100,000. No, totally. The committee and us, the, the users and us. We're spending 30 some thousand or 32000 they're spending the rest. And however, we're coming down on this. Where are they going to get the rest from? It's going to come down to whoever signs up. Your Worship, I think <coughs> Councillor Rempel made a point earlier that if the system is up and running and it's uh, working well and it's user pay, more and more members will be attracted if the service is being run properly. My point exactly. But we don't know how many people will sign up by the by the June first for 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 this to happen. And, and uh, if, if the town takes back the irrigation from Epcor and, and, and manages it and, and, and uh, provides a, a, a service to the community, 
we will see more people sign up as the year goes on and we will have a, a, a lot of users for next year. I'm sure of that. I want to be truly understood there's no hit from Escort is not doing that period. There's no hit. That's the way it has been in the past. Yeah. And and that's where the uh Go on, sir, Beth. The, the only other thing that I wanted to, that I that has been clarified is um, when you're looking at that uh, service pricing, it, it says based on the assumption that 400 users sign up, we're, we're removing the 400 users, and it says the service will be offered for $200 per season. Does that stay? Yes. The $200 stays. Yes. Okay, thank you. In my opinion, yes. So that's in the in administration's recommendation, right? So that stays. So that that tells us what they have to pay maximum. Well, that's not in the motion, Your Worship. Can we add that to the motion, Councilor Rempel? We've got to make this work somehow because I'll stay here until we make it work. My concern, of course, Your Worship, is if only 100 people sign up, we're, we're short $80,000 on this. Okay. <laughs> There will be more than 100 sign up. I can't guarantee it, but I'm sure there will be. We're going to take a five minute recess. Thank you very much. No, I didn't get a copy. Okay, thank you. Can you do it again? It's four sheets. That'll make it up, please. Thank you, ladies. Good late night. Well, we can go longer. You get to. You can go. Perfect. I gave you both a copy, and then you've got identical.